Uh, okay, getting the white pieces, gonna be opening up with d4 against d5, starting with a knight. This is the most accurate way to start if you wanna get uh, the London system for many reasons. Not gonna be getting into too much detail here. Not that there is anything secret, but it will take a while. So, most of the people that I explain why knight f3 is better, they forget the explanation. So, just remember knight f3 is better. <laughs> We get to now get back into the Chigorin and we have Chigorin with uh, knight f6. So you can think of it as the Chigorin when they are playing knight f6 and it's not the one when they delay knight f6. And against this, we're going to be doing e3. There are two plans, either bishop out or play with uh, block bishop. See, it's the plan with bishop out. First, we throw in this move. See what they want to do. Now they can take or go back. When they go back against both bishop f5 and bishop g4, when there's the bishop outside the pawn chain in the Chigorin with the two knights, remember, it's the two knights. It has to be knight f6 committed, otherwise this knight could still go there. We're going to be going for bishop b5. Now, most people will either go there or there. And on e6, we could be getting a pretty quick win. After g4, breaking the pin because we want to play knight e5. And do not make the mistake to play knight e5 here because your queen remains unprotected. So do g4 first, breaking the pin, and now knight e5. And here best move is knight e7, but most people end up playing uh, bishop d6 and just give up on the <laughs> give up on the rook after knight c6. You could be winning so many free exchanges like this, it's absolutely ridiculous. Now, if opponent plays a6, I think the most accurate way to deal with that is I think maybe just taken instead of grabbing the pawn we might be going for the kingside push I think that's accurate I think that's in the course now 97 the goal of it is that it's simply not losing the rook and they have time to play rook b8 so it's blocking the check basically but it's very tough to find this move I would say and even when they do we're gonna be winning a pawn and we're going to be having a pretty complex position. Okay, opponent finds it. After some, uh, some time spent. Pretty interesting. And now we're going to be playing B3. So pretty interesting to see how this game is going to play out. Because um, according to the engine, this variation is uh, supposed to be balanced. But... We'll see. I think white generally has the easier play with the extra pawn. Okay, I'm not like super familiar with a check. I was thinking we could do c3, bishop b1, just to take. I think that should be good. I think moving the king is unnecessary here, and also do not play knight d2 because of bishop c3. That was potentially infiltrating. So yeah, don't play this because of this, and... Just c3. See bishop back. Um, I could take on d6. I could also play uh, knight e2. Let him take. Taking on d6 is... Fine, I think, just exchanging more pieces. Then try to get a knight developed. Expecting some kind of a rook c8 move. I think we'll have to trade. So he just castles, and now I'm in the danger of him playing knight f6, and then the bishop remains out of the game. So for this reason, I think taking is mandatory. Now... See, we're up upon the only issue is that my king is going to be a little exposed. If I go short, I might not get mated in this game, but it's just that, okay, it would be much better if the pawn was on g2, you know? But it's not like a perfect world that we're living in, so. I think the risk-reward here, it's just insane to allow this line. Yo, thank you for the five gifters, Jonathan. appreciate that, buddy. You appreciate it, dude. Crazy support. Always. Thank you for that. Hope it brings the good luck for the 
for the game. I think today you have a game, right? Hope you get the white pieces and you crash with the London. <laughs> okay, we see Queen D7. I think castling will need to be played. I don't really see myself staying with a king in the middle for that long. Pawn goes f5, trying to open it up. We're just blinking g2, sort of a nice little move. Making sure that, okay, we can play f3 and just make the king side a little bit safer. So yeah, we see e5. Now, I could just play f3. Not the easiest position to play here. Black definitely has got some compensation. He's making it a mess. Castle in queenside did not really feel appealing because they've got like two open files already. So that's definitely riskier than going kingside. But I think the way we're playing it is good. And now f4. I tend to believe f4 is the move. Just kind of blocking his pawns a little bit, you know, not giving him a free hand in the center. Whenever rook c8 happens, we can play rook c1. This is well protected by the queen. Also next I might be threatening to play g5 and kind of uh, close things down. After g5 it would be very hard for black to get any attack and could potentially start Mm, yeah, playing on the other side. Now, taking with the queen is a blunder because of bishop f5, I think. And rook f6, so just do this. f5 ideas. King still feels a little bit shaky, but to my eyes, it looks like we should be able to keep this under control. So in general, like king safety is huge. That's why computer at the beginning of the line when we have this position on the board, we're up a pawn, but uh, the score is about 0-0. Zero, zero. Computer thinks, okay, black should be fine because white is lacking a safe square for the king. But I think most people are not going to be able to uh, find like precise ways to get counterplay in these lines and Generally, okay, you're up a pawn. What you need to do is just to defend and you're instantly better just because you have the pawn. You don't really do, need to do much. But when you're down a pawn, you either prove compensation or you lose. So, especially in lower ga rated games, in my opinion, it's way easier to be up material than being down material. Even if the position is equal, let's say. I'm not saying when it's winning or stuff like that. Queen f3, hitting this, queen protects the pawn, bring the rook. So yeah, definitely, I feel a little bit unsafe about my king. I'm a bit uncomfortable. You can't see it on my face, but I know this line. I know it should be okay. I think I played sort of logical moves so far. And worst case scenario, it should be equal. So that's what I have in mind. I'm hoping to be better here, but. Let's see. I don't feel like opponent has played all the critical ideas, but now he tries a trick which I have missed in the first place. Maybe that's why here f5 could have been a little bit more precise with queen f3. He tries to, yeah, go for this idea that if I take the queen comes in with huge effect, but you can simply bring the queen here. Thing still very nicely placed, covering this and the pawn. Bring the rook. Gonna be hard to win this endgame against best play. But I think we're definitely pushing. Now I'm considering d5 just to make sure this pawn is kind of lonely and we can attack it. Because if he gets to push d5, not gonna be easy. So just d5, c4. If we can get this in time, we've got ourselves a target to attack. So let's see.
Again, maybe I kind of messed it up, to be honest. Like, I don't think we need to allow this endgame. Definitely making his bishop was uh, passive was a little bit better. We're going to check it after the game. But Also, yeah, d don't expect me to like play perfect moves uh, all the time. That's like not how it happens. But you don't need perfect play to win in these games normally. So, I think to bring the rook. Rook there, it's gonna be tried. Hitting this guy, there's f5, rook g5. Threatening this. Maybe we could do queen f4. Keeping an eye on the rook. Gonna do queen e7. Still with that idea, but I think maybe just rook h1 should be okay. Also, I could do f5 in the first place, kind of avoid uh, the rook move. I think I want to do that. I'm allowing rook e5, but on the other hand, uh, prefer not to allow rook g6, even though it was not like a disaster. So rook e5 could play c4 or um, bring the rook. Okay, just do this. e2 here. Win the pawn. I think we just slowly pick up that pawn. e2 rook f2. Could have also started rook e2 maybe. Um, okay, it's going to be a little bit tricky because e2 rook f2, he's got a check. But then I think we have queen f3 and it's all under control. He only has one check, but then after that everything is protected and we pick up the pawn. Protect d5. This is huge threat. Actually, we might not be threatening rook e2 because then he gets the two rooks for the queen. I think we're still better there, but threat is to just play this and rook e2. That's like the cleanest, I think. Yeah, just block the check as I was saying. If he takes, maybe just take with a king or with the rook. I'll have to decide. If I take with a king, I have to consider g6, but just rook e2 and probably rook and game should be winning. Now, I don't really see a way for him to stop this move coming next, no matter what he does. So we're going to be picking up the second pawn and more important, we get to activate and create threats against his king. So it's really nice that we're not only up material, but we also get the initiative after we play rook e2. Because in the first place we had the pawn, but the opponent had a bit of initiative. But it looks like we pretty much kept it under control. I like to think at this point, so... This g6 is like the only potential thing to worry us. Could take, 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 gf5, uh, check, I think that should be good. The thing is I'm gonna have two connected passers and he's not. That's important. Now after this, do I wanna give a check or do I wanna play rook e7, cut his king? I feel like cutting his king is important in these end games. Just making sure he's never really doing anything. And after fg, king, g4, rook, f7, we can just take, and that's, I think, a win. So I think checking would have been inaccuracy because his king activates for no reason. Now his king is kind of passive for the rest of the game. Take. We don't mind this because... We take and protect a2. Can try maybe a5, but just rook e7 and it's probably the same thing. We're gonna have to take the pawn and his king could activate, but that's fine. I could also do this and try to force rooks, but that's not that clean. So after we take, we're gonna be up two pawns. And yeah, this is not going anywhere. Should be an easy win. Now. Could do this, he checks, could go king e6. That's a bit unnecessary, but I'm just gonna be keeping it very simple. Just play king h4, make sure that take care of his pawn with my king. He could have gone inside and 
just uh, probably one, but you never know whether his pawn is going to be, <laughs> will start rolling or not. Uh, okay. Can start pushing the pawns. I think now I'll, I'll do something like a4, a5, just try to push the a pawn. Okay, so we see trying to create a mating net, or <laughs> what's the point? I'll just do this. Then push the a pawn. Also, rook e6 is a pretty nice move coming. This is actually just such a cooler. He's getting nothing after this. King and king and pawn and game is easily a win after rookie sex. That's like the easiest way I think now. Could have pushed my pawn. Was winning in multiple ways. But this is just kind of killing all the fun. Just on rook g2, don't take h6 because you lose the rook. Take d6. I think that's important. So yeah, like now kind of the same thing. Don't take that pawn. Give rook a3, just rook there. I have king e5, I think we go after this guy. We'll also do d6, c5. I think we just push. Yep, c5. Could bring the king. Push this pawn next. Just push them together. Protect and attack. Okay, bring the king. Give a check. King C D seven. Okay, that's just uh, checkmate. I think so. Managed to keep it under control. Thank you for that, uh, GCATS. Appreciate you coming from uh, YouTube. Hey, Octav, welcome. Nice game. Thank you for that, Navi. Appreciate it. Yeah, so see, apparently I was a bit worse. I did a mistake at some point. So apparently, so far, this was good, what I played. It's just that King G2 was a bit too much of a human move. Like, King G2 feels good to play, but uh, it's weak. Should have gone F4. Like, I played this on the very next move. I just didn't realize I have to play it. So, again, yeah, it's not the easiest position to play, but I think the risk-reward ratio is just very good. All right. Moving on, getting the white pieces, facing a 1600 rated player, so this is so far the highest that we got in the rating climate. Opponent goes for c5, which I think is named the Tarash defense, that's what I like to name it in my uh, London course, where I'm recommending this very trappy sideline with dc5, and against knight c6, e4 is a really tricky move to deal with. Now, I think e6 is kind of safest. If they take on e4, it's usually leading to very bad positions for black after takes. And uh, yeah, if they take it with the king, there is knight g5, taking this, hitting f7, winning back the opponent. I think better position. And now uh, against this, we get juicy square for the knight. f6 is huge blunder. Hoping we get to see that on the board. 
I've got a huge fan of just giving a check. That's why this line is so powerful. And we actually get that on the board. No way. We can just get these kind of free wins against 1600 in Blitz. I find that pretty insane because 1600 players in Blitz are like 1800 in Rapid. So just take, win the Rook. At least he tries the tricky line, but just knight back and protect. We're having extra peace. Can just resign. Yeah, get a resignation, guys. You see? Nine moves. I did nothing on my own. Everything from the course. That's what you can get if you had a good student and just um, go to the games and get rewarded. Okay, getting another game. Putting up with Queen Spawn and Kings D5. Starting out with the Knight. Setting up the London. This is the main position. Are we going to see C5 mainline? That is what I'm wondering. And there we have it. Hold it. Going to be playing E3. And opponent throwing a pretty wild queen b6 in my face. And in order to deal with this, we have a pretty simple and effective algorithm that we use in the course. So when they play queen b6, ideally we just want to be able to play rook b1 and protect and just chill. But rook b1 is not a legal move, as you can say. Now, the other thing that we can consider, and this is the, the number of priorities, the second most important thing that we do throughout the course. This is just, you know, sort of a thinking process that you can apply and get to the right moves of my course. We can literally do this thing all the time when we see Queen B6. So when this happens, now, second most important thing is whether you can play Knight C3 and meet Queen B2 with Knight B5. That is my recommendation in the course. And that actually seems legit here. If this pawn was on c6, that's not a thing because it's covering b5. But with a pawn on c5, just knight c3, queen b2, knight b5 will be the move. Now, let's assume knight c3 was not working. Then the last thing that we would do is queen c1. So we never really play b3 in these lines against queen b6 ever. Just do knight c3 now, as I was saying. Queen b2, knight b5. Pretty sure if they take on b2, that's a losing line. But... Um, they could also try like a6 here or bishop d7. Those are interesting moves that are also covered in the course. This is better just stopping uh, me from playing knight b5. But against that, uh, I recommend uh, going uh, for a3. And we're likely to take on c5 and transpose into a job of a London structure. Now on queen b2, knight b5 is the idea, threatening the fork. And against knight a6, I think we have a forced win. Probably you can either win with rook b1, rook a1, rook takes a6, or knight a6, a3 could be a win. I just need to remember this. Okay, it goes for check, but that's just easily losing. Maybe knight a6 doing something like dc5 would be a thing. Just trying to remember bishop f5 and then knight d4. No, I think just rook b1, rook a1. I had many games like that already. I was just wondering if there was something else. So just c3, knight's covering it. Now this is double threat. This simply lost for black. Taking on b2 is losing in the first place here. It just lost after knight b5 with best play. But um, yeah, now after even the queen b4, which was a mistake, I think it should be even an easier win, just uh, going for the fork, picking up the rook. He's going to win pawn on c3, but we can just block with knight e2. Now also, if he goes this aggressive, I'm wondering, okay, knight e5 needs to be a move. There, we have discovery, win the queen. What else? King d8. Can they go f7, king d7. How is that position? <laughs> knight e5, take... Come on. So I think we do it this way. 95. Goes to d8. We take. He goes to d7. And then maybe we just protect c3. And both of his rooks are under attack. They're not running anywhere. And we can pause and stop his counter play. So many good options. Indeed. That's like sometimes the tricky part. It's easy to get overwhelmed by so many good options. But 
Now I think it's pretty forcing. King d8. Well, everything wins here. But when you think this way, you just allow queen c3 and it becomes very messy. So I don't think everything is that clearly winning. It may look like everything wins, but I'm telling this position can be very dangerous if you're not careful. Especially when this check is looming here. You play king e2 and you feel like, okay, it must be, must be fine, but can easily go out of hand with such kings. So I think it's precise to just do take. And now after king move, really considering just playing that, you know. I also check by knight c6, so just rook c1, not allowing any checks. Both rooks hanging. I think this is the cleanest. Also, don't play queen d2 because of knight e4. Now cd4, just take with the queen or whatever. <laughs> Probably take with the e-pawn. No, I'm not trolling, come on. I'm being dead serious here. I, I legitimately think taking rooks here was a mistake and a weak move. Now, this looks kind of mating to me. Maybe check first to force knight c6. Because if I check here, there is king there. So I think check, forcing this move. Then we bring the queen out. Only move e6 and then we take with the queen. I think that's precise. Yeah, okay, he just resigned, but uh, we would have got like a pretty nice mate here, I think. Okay, what was the game review? <laughs> Are we gonna get the max? Not the max, come on. And okay, like to show you. Oh, queen e4 was a mate in three. Wait, come on, where was the mate? Wait, there was mate in one that I missed. Oh, this was mate in one. <laughs> Funny, that's why it was not a perfect game. So yeah, guys, here I think if you're genuinely, which rook do you wanna take? You take this? Okay, let's say somebody plays uh, this against you, like e5. I don't know, it's just like so unnecessary to play with the king on e2 here. You can just do rook c1 and uh, your king is so safe all the time. He could have been a really weak move to take the rook. And by the way, just curious about this, like if he plays knight e6. I was, uh, yeah, I kind of knew a3, bishop f5. I think this is what I give in the course. Yeah, I remember having this line in the course, just as completely winning after c6. This one to knight e4, but if bishop g6, then c6. This is given in the course, and I think I also played in the past the other move that should be okay, rook b1. That, uh, yeah, even a3 is stronger there, but this wins as well, from what I can recall. This wins, but it's somewhat messy. So, in this position after knight c3, queen b2 is a mistake. They either play a6, uh, bishop d7, even Hikaru played that once, c4. Yeah, I think those are like the three interesting candidates that Black has. All covered in the course, by the way. <laughs> All right, getting a game facing a 1600 opponent. Gonna be starting with Queen Spawn and against the Knight move. Gonna be starting with a Bishop. And when you see d6, this should be a pretty clear indication that most likely it's gonna be some kind of Fianchiaro. So. We're gonna get a knight and we're gonna be sticking with the main recommendation from the course. Just c3 92. And try to go for the e4 push. C c6, some kind of an on weird old Indian kind of line. Still do the same. It just goes for a weird setup. We don't really care. <laughs> just play with e4 and uh, play like we would do against, let's say, normal King's Indian. Now, Bishop D3 could actually be a bit better than uh, the standard Bishop E2 that we do against the King's Indian because there's no, like, immediate break that he could go for. So just going to go for the more active square. Castle. 
In V5, we could take and take with the knight, or we can just uh, go back to G3. Because B5, now, whenever they do these kind of moves, you should really try to punish them with A4. I think that's what we do. A6 is just AB, and if he takes, he just has weak pawn. There's usually just positional mistake. You can use this hook with A4. Very nice, powerful tool that you can abuse. A lot of people just throw in B5 randomly and... Um, yeah, I can do this. Now they've got like really ugly structure. You just have a lot of pressure in the long run. Queen side's completely ruined. You can castle. Better in the side, in the center, better on the side here. Definitely feeling in control. And get ourselves castled. Expecting some 97, but then against the b7 bishop, I think. Very powerful could be something like this. Now, knight c4, knight e4 could be a thing. Bishop e4 and d5, or knight c4, d5. So, for this reason, I think I'm just gonna be a little bit more sneaky. Do I wanna be sneaky? I wanna do this. Can he go c5, hitting this pawn? Okay, I'll just rook e1 first, make sure this is well defended, and then we're playing for this. So... Yeah, I think we're just going for the sneaky threat. Trying to get a knight done to that. Juicy a5 square. Plays knight b6. I think I'm just gonna be making a... Go to a5, go for the end game. A3, kind of stepping into d5, so just to a2 is fine. Also b4, same d5 motive. Just here with knight a5. On the next move. Just trying to highlight a pretty annoying maneuver that we have for the knight. This is also a common thing that we have against the Queen's Indian type of lines when we play a4 and then a5. If they take, so it plays d5, just... Uh, Keep expanding, hit the knight, this is coming next. Don't worry about this bishop being bad or anything, it's the bad bishop that's defending the good pawns, telling it this bishop is way more uncomfortable with this one for example. So uh, e5 is just a great move, taking more space, continue with this, hitting the poor bishop, expecting queen c7 and then I think maybe just take and win on e6. Not even gonna do that, I'm just gonna be fixing his pawns with b4. Stopping him from breaking c5. Now all of his pieces are literally trapped. It's actually such a dream position that we have. And we might be using the same kind of principle attacking on both, pla both uh, flanks and uh, do this h pawn push. Just go queen c2 maybe. Yeah, so he plays bishop c8, I think. Um, pushing the h pawn is pretty standard tool that you can use here when you have the extra space. Get it all the way to h6, and when they do that, uh, bring the queen over. Just threatening to go bishop sack and... Get a mating attack because he has no pieces over the queen side, especially after we have this pawn on e5. Whenever this pawn is on e5, we have great chances for, for a, an attack because there's no knight on f6. So, tries h5, could play this if I want to be fancy, could just play bishop g5, trade bishops, get my pieces around. Do I want to do this? <clears throat> I feel like knight g5 is perhaps the cleanest. Bishop takes, take with the h pawn. Not so sure about knight g5, maybe. For sure, it's a big advantage, but um, maybe bishop g5 was interesting and should have considered it more. I'm just thinking if I take this way, he plays g6. Can I break this easily? Maybe we can. Yeah, I think we actually can just uh, <laughs> bring our pieces over much easier. Also, I could take with a bishop and it's 
Probably mating. Yeah, I think taking with the bishop might be even simpler. So he goes knight c4. Um, could ignore and play there. Could take twice. Hmm. Okay, I think just taking the free pawn is kind of the human way of playing it. Okay, I want to do something fancy. I want to take and I want to play bishop e4, but I think first we can throw in a check. And then uh, get our bishop to e4. Like queen e2, he simply has g6 in this possession, and I don't see a follow up. Maybe there's knight f7. Doesn't seem to work though. I think I prefer this just to have the active bishop. We don't really care at that point. We can win it anytime and just want to be playing for this. Yeah, so knight b6, trying to get it to d5, makes sense. We need to forcing g6. Now after g6, wonder whether we can force a win with knight f7, rook f7, bishop g6, rook f4, win h5, king g8, check, king f8, win h8 is checkmate, so that is one line. Now, another one could be rook g7, win h5. In g8. Um, don't see such an obvious continuation there. Like maybe check, rook takes queen e8, but that doesn't seem to win. So maybe sacrificing is not the way now. Although in this position after bishop g6, rook g7, queen h5, king g8, bishop h6, huge flat. Let's say bishop f8. Rook e4, pretty sure that's winning, so. I think it's maybe pretty instructive attacking line, so just gonna go for it. We've got a lot of pieces, it's gotta be a checkmate. A lot of these guys are not really participating. Hitting the rook, taking the bishop blitz to force mate on age 8 as calculated. This is kind of only move. And then queen h5 here, bishop h6 is deadly with rook e4, rook g4 idea coming. So let's see. I think any bishop move is weaker now, like bishop f8, queen h5 check. Rook h7, maybe actually bishop move is interesting. For some reason, I kind of quickly declined it, but maybe it's interesting. Yes, bishop move, we also have bishop g5 as candidate. Bishop move just to put up queen's path. So bishop f8 takes, rook h7. Hmm. Take it, queen takes, do queen e8, plays maybe queen g8. Then maybe he D just kind of wins the house. <laughs> that should be winning there. <clears throat> um, let's see. I think we are fine against all the lines. I think this is literally all you need to calculate when going for such sacrifice. If you like, let's say, can calculate this whole sequence. I don't think that's a problem. Maybe you can either play it intuitively or play safer move. Like maybe in this position, do something like g4. That's also kind of candidate without sacrificing yet. But I think really sacrifices. So strong now. <clears throat> because rook f4 yeah, just gets made in with checks. Rook g7, uh, this. With rook coming over is deadly. Yeah, just take. 
<clears throat> Bishop h6 next. Wait, come on, why did he resign? <laughs> hey guys, I'll have to show you now the line is on the computer. So. Okay, knight of seven plus three. Wait, let's get the game review first. So he actually got a 92, but no brilliant moves. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Everything was good. It was 95 best line. But line kind of close. This was actually super precise. And now, so the line was going rook g7 takes. Here bishop h6. And I've seen bishop f8, rook e4. Get the rook and just sort of a sample line could be, let's say, like this. And now if they take, uh, we could have gone like takes. If they take uh, with a bishop, start checking them like this. And if they take with a queen, that is mate in one <laughs> because uh, of the pin. So this was the rook g7 line. Now... If he was taking rook f4, there would have been forced mate. And if he was playing bishop f8, I think this position was clearly winning after takes and uh, queen e8, queen g8. Wait, queen e8 was losing. Oh my god, I actually missed that the rook is covered in this variation. He would have had bishop d7. That would have been blunder. So apparently... The computer recommends just playing queen somewhere, like g4. Or even going for the end game. Computer thinks end games are completely winning. That was not what I had in mind. So just decent. Okay, that was nice. Because my initial calculation was that in this position we do this and after queen g8, queen c6 will win. Which is correct. Easy win. But he has bishop d7 and covers everything. Because forgot the knight protects the rook. For sure g4 was playable on move 24. That's always like okay. It's just that. If you can go for direct win, you go for direct win. Alright, we're getting the white pieces. Gonna be going for. The London system against d5. Starting with the knight. We're gonna be getting the bishop out. And curious to see whether we're going to see any kind of Chigori in. Looks like it's only e6. We'll play e3. The opponent goes for the quick bishop d6 line. Now, in the course, we have knight bd2 as the main move. And also knight e5 as an interesting alternative. Uh, I'm thinking just to play the main move, knight bd2. And let him take on f4. Potentially show you how to play the Berkey structure. Most people, I think, don't take on f4 in all kinds of rating ranges. And now we're just going to be making the move c3. In case of c5, we can just go uh, for uh, bishop d3 and transpose into the normal lines. Uh, well, actually, that's not right. Against c5, bishop d3 is <laughs> the move. I just kind of... <clears throat> I just kind of confused it with something else, so like bishop d3, knight c6, and then we play bishop um, g3. So now this is the move, and after bishop takes, pawn takes. That's a thing for black, that's a good line to take now. It's mentioned in the course. Also, a lot of people try out queen c7, which has been recommended in a video by Jonathan Schranz, which is, which is like trending on YouTube on the anti-London things. And against that we take and then we play knight e5. That's the point of our move order, avoiding bishop g3. So on cd, important to not play this because bishop hangs, but do take on d6 intermezzo. And after queen takes <clears throat> ed4, we're going to have a very nice position covering this square. Knight e6 can simply castle and okay, in that position I think it's best for black to try to play e5 even though 
I'm gonna be getting the isolated pawn. I think still we should be slightly better. Uh, just because of a bit of a better pawn structure and sort of long term pressure that we get in the end game. I'm gonna be castling. So, okay, when we're saying the word patzer in chess, we basically refer to, like, let's say a beginner, but it's actually pretty multi-purpose word because a patzer could be somebody rated 1000, but also when, uh, let's say, two strong players are discussing and they're referring to somebody, it could also be like a fide master that can be called a patzer. So it really depends uh, <laughs> who's like using it. it. Can be used in many different situations. So patzer is <laughs> really <clears throat> specific chess word. Generally means a uh, bad player or weak player. <laughs> but I'm telling you, somebody that's starting out can be a patzer, but also. You know, even an international master can be a patzer for, let's say, some 2600 rated players. The queen g5, just gonna play knight f3 and hit the queen. Get a tempo. The queen h5. So, in these positions, the only thing that black kind of is hoping for is just to get some activity to compensate for the IQP. As long as we can keep that under control, we should be doing well. Now, this looks super tempting because this queen doesn't have that many squares. It's not like the most uh, natural move of all time. Looks pretty strong. If queen h6, mm, maybe even queen c1, just kind of forcing queens off. I think that's a reasonable move. Uh, <clears throat> also thinking about knight d4, the thing with knight d4 is that bishop g4 could be like a little bit annoying, even though there's like f3 at the very least that can be played and controlling e4 square as well. I think knight d4 is a strong move. We'll just play. Against knight g4, the point is we have h3. Stopping the mate and getting rid of the knight and bishop g4 looks... Annoying, but simply f3 is very strong in this structure. Like, usually f3 is, you know, kind of very double-edged and need to be careful with it, but I think in these structures, in the isolated queen spawn position, f3 can work pretty well here. Especially <clears throat> because there are no uh, dark squared bishops on the board. <clears throat> we don't have any, like, uh, weak sort of diagonals. Uh, so let's see. Happy to play an endgame like this. We need to like definitely play that on for a while before we win it, but it's pretty risk-free endgame that we can play on forever. So he tries to keep queens on. I could do queen f3, queen g3, I think. That's pretty thematic. Meeting this with queen g3. Would be even better if we can get the double pawns on g3 because after a while we can push f3 g4 in the end game. But we'll see. Thing is, he's gonna be kind of forced to trade queens pretty soon after we play queen g3. I think this could potentially be a very instructive game. If we get into these end games, I feel like this could happen like quite a lot. It's also that from the course, we're getting these positions pretty often. I also have like a model game won by Kamsky from the same structure. It was a little bit different because in his game, both rooks were traded off and he was pushing in this position with only queen and two minors against queen and two minors. Still super unpleasant for black to defend. But here, after we play something like queen g3, I don't think opponent has much of a choice but to trade. Because if queen h5, then rook e5 now, 
really is gonna hurt, I think. Just activating our pieces with tempo. So expecting to have this on the board. So it'd be like really nice to play. Okay, he just goes to h6. Interesting stuff. So he really wants to avoid the endgame. Now, if I want to be super annoying, I could be playing h4. He's going to do this. And then we have queen g5. Really <laughs> forcing queens off. Knight e4. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure that's so good because if I have to take one e4, not like a huge fan of this. <clears throat> okay, so what else uh, can we play? This is not really a threat because of rook e2, always. Rook e5 strikes me as a natural move. Bring the other one, but then he trades. Hmm. Knight f5, bishop takes, bishop takes. I don't think that's like an amazing trade. Maybe bishop f5 could be a little bit more annoying for opponent. Because after the bishop trade, he's going to have some concrete issues. But yeah, like bishop f5, let's say rook e8. We take. Takes with a knight. Even in that position, knight f5 is really annoying it seems. Although he has queen f6. So I'm considering this move, rook e8, and then something. Hmm. So maybe rook e7 is a move. Rook e8, and then rook d7 with knight f5. That doesn't really seem to work, though. Hmm. Queen e6, another tempting one, or queen c7. So many tempting moves. It's crazy. So let's say this, rook e8. This is kind of what I'm really tempted to play, and then maybe just queen d6. Can make him trade, take with a knight, hit his queen, knight e7 looming. That looks good. I think we just do bishop f5. I actually spent like 3 minutes on this move, which is insane. But <laughs> I think the upcoming moves are going to be pretty easy to make. I really... Wanted to dive a little bit deeper into this position. It's not like really the most practical approach. A move such as bishop f5 can be played in like 15, 20 seconds. But I really wanted to... Yeah, maybe see whether there's like a really sort of clean way to play this. But bishop f5, just sort of a nice little trade. Get the knight to f5. Yeah, just doing this. He's gonna take. Mm-hmm. Knight f5, queen f6. Maybe even knight e3 in that position. Hitting d5. Also this. Looks to be winning a pawn, maybe. Yeah, I think this might actually just win a pawn. I'm not sure. It looks like super tempting though. I don't really believe that much in rook e1, queen d2. Kind of play that he could have. Like this, potentially. I don't know, that doesn't really seem to be a thing right now. Because can easily play rook f1 and still his knight is under attack. We seem to... Start collecting his pawns first. Yeah, so just 
thinking about taking should be good enough. Rook B, there's queen C6 move, that's precise. So he doesn't have rook B2 motifs because of the back anchor. Knight G4, kind of same H3. So he plays this, but there's like rook E8, or maybe there's knight F3 simply. Hitting the queen and protecting this. Probably has to go back to h6 and then we play queen a6. Or maybe play queen d3, but I'm considering rook a d1. Could try maybe queen c2, but then queen b3. He's also going down on time. Maybe he doesn't realize it. Preparing to bring my queen home. Once the queen is back, um, should be relatively safe. Maybe just queen e3, offer the queen trade. Hinting on another pawn. Okay, so he's looking for that. That was maybe a good move by him. Centralize. Just protect. Squint's a little annoying. I don't know. For the queen trade. Now knight e4 I wanted f3. Get rid of this knight and infiltrate with my queen. Yeah, just queen e7 seems good enough. Initiating uh, the trades. Queen c8, maybe queen f6. So he can't pick up c3 because of the hanging rook. Okay, so that's interesting. If I take, he takes with the queen and then he wants queen e1, but then I have king f2. And against that, thinking queen e5, just keeping an eye on this and hitting the pawn. Go like this, queen c3, there's queen d8, winning the knight because of the back rancor. Then we also might win his queen. Give a check, protect the knight. Let's go to g8. And now just make some kind of loof.
Okay, so he takes one pawn. Maybe just play it for the mate. Threatening mate there. Okay, opponent loses on time, but I think the position was also completely winning. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, I spent a lot of time on that bishop f5 move. That was sort of the critical position for the whole game. I think that, um, yeah, well, first things first in this position after bishop to d3, what I faced the most in my, uh, in my games on the, on my main account, people try out, uh, queen to c7 with the idea that, okay, if bishop g3, knight bd7, castle e5, Black is completely equalizing in this structure, so then the trick is to take on d6 and uh, play knight e5 with the idea to go f4 next with setting up what I like to name the uh, reverse stonewall and white is better. We have many games like this on the channel already, and instead of this, um, yeah, opponent went for cd. Another common move that I see is um after knight c6 just playing the move bishop to g3 and transposing to the normal main lines arising after b6 queen e2 bishop b7 rook d1 yo navi with the fucking 20 gifters dude you're insane thank you for that <laughs> sorry for ruining the recording no problem dude <laughs> Thank you for that, man. Appreciate the support. See, I'm already, already learning, trying to improve the video. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, man. Honestly, I'd be surprised if there's like somebody in the stream that's not subbed. <laughs> so many gifted subs. Holy smokes. We need the song. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, we need a song. <laughs> let's do this. Let's, 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 Wait. let's, 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 Thank you for the gift, uh, Jonathan. Appreciate it, dude. <laughs> Play the song. <laughs> mm. All right, guys. So shall we? <laughs> like where we were at? <laughs> uh, shall we continue like explaining the position or go into the main account? We could play some games on the main account, but let me finish the, <laughs> this one. So, um, go for the, this kind of main lines with e4, as I was saying, and, um, yeah, in the game, opponent ended up playing something that looked pretty tempting, which is CD, because if we play like, let's say, the normal looking move cd4 i think um, yeah like black is completely fine here after bishop takes pawn takes i really hate getting into like this structure with the 
isolated pawn on d4. Like that could be done sometimes when uh, this knight is already committed to d7. But when this knight can develop to c6 easily, this is not amazing. So after cd, important to not go ed because you blended the bishop. I think that was clear. And we have this intermezzo move, hitting the rook. So they're forced to take, and we go ed. 96 castle opponent went e5. This is pretty interesting because I think e5 is the best try for, for black in the position, even though they are still worse. I think it's definitely bringing some active prospects uh, to the table because what a lot of low rated players might do is they just play bishop d7, allowing white to go rook e1, and then they realize they need some kind of activity, try to prepare rook e8, but now we can simply play the move 95 we're in time with blocking their pawn break the bishop is passive this is very active and on the very next move we're ready to just push f4 support the knight go for the rook lift and go for like kingside attack a very sort of instructive tactic could be here after b5 uh, rook h3 they go b4 we have bishop takes on h7 and get a queen could result in a very quick mate so that is when black uh, plays passive and does not go for the e5 uh, break. But here he went for it. And we got in slightly better position after queen g5, knight f3, queen h5. Apparently the computer just likes playing queen e2 with idea to go rook e5. And yeah. I was really thinking rook e5 should be tempting, but okay, I mean, I wasn't sure. So queen h6, I was thinking queen c1 is a move just to, um, yeah, force queens off. But I wasn't sure, like, this endgame is such an easy push. Like, normally, in these type of endgames, if you trade, like, all the heavy pieces, black is going to have an easier time defending. So if, you, if we can keep only rooks and queens on the board, we're going to be having much easier push against pawn on d5, so... Play 94, still, it's not like in the previous position, I, I said like, wasn't sure about trading queens, but here, if we trade queens, it's definitely a bit of a better version, the rooks are more active, we get to infiltrate, so I fe felt like that was really nice, and I yeah, played queen h4, was pretty strange, I felt like queen f3 should be very thematic, and if we can get a trade like this, opponent did not take in the game, but if he was... I think this is just amazing. Even a position like this, if they go rook e8, I mean, we can just keep a pair of rooks. Like, computer says to trade. Trading is fine. I would probably just even do something like rook d1. Keep the rook and try king f2. And important idea here to always go for this g4 push, king f2. This is a very nice asset in the end game usually. So I think it would have been even nicer if he was trading queens. To this, bishop f5 is usually very nice because if he trades, it's already lost because queen g6, there's a fork. And on rook e8, just got to take and queen c7 was indeed best move because we're winning the pawn. And this should be objectively winning. I ran out of time, so couldn't really find any like good moves here or just like moving back and forth for a bit. But uh, it looks like we managed to coordinate and the queen e7 should be a pretty straightforward win. All right, looks like we've got ourselves the white pieces. Gonna be trying out the London system against d5, starting with a knight always. And after knight e6, we already have the Chigorin, while my opponent is rated 1600, which is... Pretty interesting because normally I wouldn't really expect these type of players like playing the Chigori in that much. I think it's definitely very common below 1500, but it's interesting to see that even here it's still like pretty popular guess. So after we play bishop f4, opponent has basically two ways to play this to either go knight f6 or to delay knight f6. So whenever they delay knight f6, we're going to be playing for the c4 push. So we see. This type of move, or f6, or bg4 plans, or any kind of random move on the side, we just do c4. As simple as that. That's like 
pretty easy to remember. Now, explaining why going for C4 immediately might be a little bit trickier because there are some kind of subtle opening nuances that it's actually not even that relevant to fully understand as long as you remember how to play properly. So putting goes for E6. Usually I actually like to start with taking, taking here because it's kind of forced to take with a pawn. Now taking with a queen would be a mistake as we could develop the knight, hit the queen and uh, win a tempo. So we see pawn captures, which is what I was expecting. Just going to be playing knight c3. By the way, quick mention, after c4, you don't have to be worried about any kind of knight b4 jumps. Trying to go over to c2 because there's queen a4 check. And white is much better. So we see e6 and now I'm going to simply develop. Against this move, we have an easy way to protect. We drew to c1 all the time. That's not really an issue. Okay, opponent goes for f6, which is actually first time uh, I see something like this. I guess it's pretty dubious. His idea is clearly to push some kind of g5, but I don't think it's right. The first move that comes to mind to punish this type of idea that's not protecting the center is to simply go queen b3. Hitting two pretty weak pawns. Now, can opponent actually counter me with knight b4? We're forced to go rook c1. I don't think g5 he can really get such an amazing version. Like, also, the most natural move to be played would be e3, allowing g5, then bishop g3. I think that's fine. I think we'll just go with the easiest one. Could also go for like some kind of advanced prophylaxis and play h3. But I think I'm just going to be sticking with the most natural move. Just going for the pawn push. Expecting him to go g5. Otherwise, can't really justify his previous move. Some players are cheeky and try to go h5. But can just make a loop against it. Was bishop d6 pretty interesting. So, I think that actually just allows us to win a pawn. We could also do it by taking and then playing queen b3. But still, maybe knight b4 is a little bit annoying, so. I think that's actually just waiting to be captured. Bishop takes, knight takes back, and I don't really see any, like, reasonable compensation for my opponent, so. Just gonna cash in the free pawn. Check we just take again. So, I think that was just a blunder, in my opinion. If bishop e4, I think we could perhaps just... Take their intermezzo, or at the very least, just step back with a knight, hit the bishop. We've got the extra pawn. We don't really mind, like, whether he takes twice on... I mean, he takes once on f4, and then we're going to be having the double pawns. That is not a problem. So, okay, our knight is under attack. Need to capture this way. Go g5. Now, can I go for some kind of crazy knight g5 with queen h5? The thing is, he could maybe play king f8 in that position, and... I don't really see an obvious continuation, so I think we're just going to stick with simple chess. Just move knight d3. Move the knight away, if g4. I think just knight h4, hitting the bishop should do the job. If he doesn't play g4, well, he can simply continue with either bishop e2 castle or rook c1. So we could play knight d2, that's like also just fine. But I like h4 a little bit better because we're hitting the bishop and the pawn's a little vulnerable. So he plays bishop e4, but now he can simply collect on uh, g4, I would assume. Hitting the bishop in case of f5, we have knight takes on f5, we also have check. Bishop d3, just uh, take it back. Could also play bishop d3, queen g7 as a funny intermediate move. But I think we'll probably stick with the simplest. Bishop captures. Could also throw in a check, like bishop d3. And go for this if I want to be like really annoying for my opponent. And then take back. But by doing this, he loses the right to castle. So I think that's what we're going to do. When bishop takes on d3. Okay, we see queen d5. Just uh, protecting the bishop, which actually seems like a reasonable move to me. Now, how do we win instantly? I would like to play this, but maybe he could try to get some kind of blame. I think that's like completely winning, but maybe he can castle, I take, he can go knight takes on d4, try to create a mess. So I think we don't want that. Thinking more to play knight c5, which is blocking his only check and attacking the bishop. So 
that should probably be good enough, I would assume. Now, if he goes f5, he can throw in the check at the very least. He can also maybe go for the ambitious queen move. Have many, many alternatives. Also, we could do queen e6 and force the queens off next if needed. We'll see, depending on what he does. Yeah, okay, to be honest, you should try some kind of knight before, just some weird moves to hope for some miracle, but not gonna be working. And with knight e5, not sure what his plan is. I mean, he wants to do this, but then we can win the bishop. That's still winning for us, but even simpler is to take it with a queen directly. And after that, we're forcing queens off, and we're gonna be having a pretty winning endgame because we're gonna be up a piece and. Queens off, usually similar to resignation. So that's what he does, and we managed to get this game like pretty quickly. Only 14 moves against 1650 players. So um, I think that was pretty good. Mm. Can't can't really say what I could have improved on. Anything else? If I if I go, uh, let's say, back for a bit. Here in this position, I would say like the theoretical move would be to play like knight to f6 and after e3, bishop to d6, we have a nice uh, thematic trick that I mentioned in the course as well to go bishop to g5 with the idea that, okay, if we simply exchange bishops, still maybe white's position is a little bit more enjoyable, but it might be getting a bit flat, tough to win because uh, of so many trades. But after bishop g5, we have a very nice trick to win a pawn because, well, Knight d5 is a threat. And after bishop e7, there is this cute idea to just go for the double attack and win a pawn. There's no way for black to protect. Now, this would be what they normally do in the book. They play knight f6 and, okay, they could also play bishop b4, bishop e7. The game does not really change by much. Normally, in this structure, I just like to... Uh, copy the position of these bishops, so if it's there, I like to exchange it. If it's on g4, I like to block the diagonal and castle. Just try to get the minority attack like we normally do in the Karokan as well. So yeah, after he played f6, e3, bishop to d6, this is kind of a losing mistake already, just dropping the d5 pawn. Uh, I would have definitely expected him to play something like g5 and go for some kind of a crazy pawn push. This is what I think most of uh, the you know opponents of this rating range would have done after h5. And you can either go h4 or h3. I think both are fine. In this position, I would have probably preferred h4 just to fix these pawns and move the knight away, uh, even maybe to g1, because we can later on reroute. I think starting with bishop d3 next, followed by... Uh, trade of bishop and knights going to f4 and if you like really ask yourself what has black achieved with this is like not really that much because his king's position is kind of ruined now he only has queenside castle but that is going to be pretty weak mostly because of uh, these ideas that we have to push because of the open c file so yeah just uh winning after he blundered the pawn there with bishop d6 95 i think 